Well, that's how it played out in some parts of the country. INEX uh, mock accreditation where the cartridges were tested in 12 states in the country. We're joined now by Mary Koko, who is a publisher, working in Moms Africa magazine and a former head of communication at Shopee. Thank you for coming on this morning. You're welcome. Well, now, INEC has uh, they hit several parts of the country testing their card readers. And, well, reports say there are mixed reactions, but INEC will go back eventually and then come up with a report on this one. What you've observed, what was it that you noticed about this card reader test? Well, um, what I've noticed really is not out of place because right now, like you rightly said, is a mock event. Now, when it's mock, it's a time to test run, and you'll be able to see what could go wrong and take back the feedback and be able to fix that before the election. So it's good that mock and test running is going on right now. And though I had wished it would have been done earlier on. And um, the feedbacks we are getting is normal because every item you produce, there must be some um, errors. So they, you would have logistic errors, you would have uh, technical um, errors, but we just hope it's not going to be um, an overwhelming um, error so that at the end of the day we would truly have that free and credible election that we all desperately desire. But you heard about that argument about uh, whether or not they should go ahead and use the card readers, uh, parties disagreeing about the usage of the card readers. Where do you think that stands now in the face of this test? Well, for me, um, having lived in Nigeria for so many years and having witnessed a lot of elections in this country, this card reader will be that defining aspect of our election. This card reader is the, that differentiator. This card reader is that credibility we all want in this election. And taking it out, I would not imagine how everything is going to span out. If uh, the people with the opinion to drop the card reader idea, they might have their, their own um, reasons for saying that. But what is the overall good of the people? Because if you look at it, really, when there's a card reader, there's something to authenticate one, the individual that is voting. Like in some states, I know in a state where a certain party had taken all these cards from their citizens, but in the last two weeks, they've been calling them and giving them back the cards because they realize that with this card reader, even taking on those cards, they're not gonna, it's not going to be useful to them. How did they do that? They forcefully took them or the citizens submitted it to, to the state? Well, <laughs> someone told me I have 5,000 PVCs with me. Really? Yes. And I said, how did you get all of that? Because I live in Lagos, and this is the first time I'm really, during this election, that I've really had to go down to my state to see what's going on there. You know, so when you start hearing this, these things are unsettling, and you begin to show some concern particularly when you know that we really need to get it right this time in my state and other states and in the country anyway. So I, my own opinion, my view should be that the card reader should be sustained, it should be used, because that is what will make this election believable to a great extent. In terms of the preparations for the elections, do you think we're doing well so far? I think we're doing well. But, you know, from my own uh, professional side, I don't think we've done um, well enough in the area of communication. Um, I had to, on my own, go and do a research, go to INEC uh, uh, website to find out what the ballot paper really looks like. A lot of Nigerians don't know. I had to go and see how is the voting procedure, how is it going to be done. So those sensitization that should go on, I haven't seen much of it, particularly even in the rural communities where there are different kinds of models, communication models that work for such people. Now, a lot of Nigerians do not even know that they need to vote with their index finger and not thumb, right? So those kind of voters' educations are things that people need to know. 
regardless of your academic uh, status, you know, even the educated Nigerians do not know about using index finger to vote. Because when you use your thumb, the thumb is bigger. Because it's called thumb printing, people naturally will assume you have to vote with your thumb, right? And then most of the void votes you have that are recorded in those elections, a whole lot of them are when you're trying to use this big thumb to print, the thumb print, and then it spills to the other party symbol. And the vote becomes void. I, you know, a lot of work in the area of communication needs to be done. And that is one area I don't think we are doing well enough. Another area I find challenges, going down to my state, I've been able to find out that there are a lot of things that haven't been reported. And it is really, really discomforting. So where's your state? I'm from Abia State. Okay, good. Okay. So all these things have been going on, but because we live in Lagos, you really do not realize what goes on in the hinterland and tell some us, of these states. Tell us if you let me come in here, because uh, we, we're privileged to have the National Retention Agency uh, Director General last week in the studios, and he said, well, they've gone around uh, the country to the extent that they have some of those models in the local dialect of the people, mm -hmm. uh, trying to sensitize people. Have you been able to get... Uh, uh, to listen or get uh, any of those handouts from the NOA or INEC? I haven't. I haven't gone for it, in fairness to them. But I have done but you my don't own need, you, don't, you don't have to go for it. You have to sit somewhere and you get to hear the, the information. I haven't if, if, heard if anyone. An and for the one week I was in Abia State, I had none. And now the people, I took it upon myself to educate people. The people, even the educated people, even some, some uh, uh, candidates do not even know. Yes, it is that amazing. And then one would begin to think that, you know, when we talk about communication, people misunderstand a lot of things. And I always say to people, if your communication, if it is not strategic, you haven't started communicating. And it has to be strategic in the sense that you should be able to know the language this woman understands, the woman who sells Gary in the street. You need to understand how best to reach that woman, what platform that works for that woman, what model of communication that she can easily accept that reaches her more easily, and what kind of language, how airy her language should be. You can't communicate to a professor in the same language you will communicate to a, shoe, a shoemaker, right? Now, have they really sat down to say, this is how we want to target this, the various stakeholders and reach out to every relevant audience in Nigeria as far as this election is concerned? They may have done well in many other you know, different parts, but a lot of government projects, policies, and events, they fail, not because they were not well thought of, thought of not because of poor implementation of those policies and projects but most times if we look closely it may just be due to lack of inadequate uh, due to inadequate communication attention being paid to those projects and policies of government so our government need to get it right really talking about these um, non-violent elections I mean, several peace pacts are being signed across the country mm -hmm. how is it playing out in Abia? are the support are the leaders telling their supporters and show that you do not react in the face of provocation as we always insist they do? Well, I can speak for one that I, you know, I got, I, I made that time to go to their campaign office, um, the Abga people. When I, I arrived in here and I went straight to um, Abga campaign office because it's right there on the road leading to the government house, you know, and on entering there, I saw two women. I saw some women packed, you know, in a corner, being addressed by somebody. So I was trying to introduce myself to say, I need to meet with somebody. I need to know what's going on. I want to be part of the process that would elect the leader in my state. I want to be, how can I help, you know? And I, I noticed the man I was speaking to was a bit distracted. He said they have an emergency in their hand. And then my attention was drawn to these women. One of them had her eyes fully uh, plastered. And the other one had her legs bandaged. These women were battered by the opposition. 
And when you begin to see things like this, and then I, I ask them, can I see your own? I need to see your chairman. I need to see the director of this campaign. Why are you people not saying these things? The world needs to know what's going on in this state. And they told me that the, what is priority to them is getting these women's health care, um, getting them to be safe, first of all, in terms of taking them to the hospital and ensuring that they are fine, you know, and not die out of this crisis. But I said, okay, what other things are you doing? Because we need to know. If I didn't come down here, I probably wouldn't know this has happened. And they said their principle, that this is not the first time, that some time ago, all their billboards, the billboards of their candidate, the Otis, uh, the Alex Oti, were all destroyed by the opposition. We shouldn't be doing these things in this century. Were destroyed, and then the people, but you know when change has come, the people of Abia State actually came out to demonstrate and say, look, you can destroy this man's posters, you can destroy his billboards, but you cannot destroy his name from our hearts. You is can't that take a, it out of our hearts. Is it a so one-off? Is it it's a one-off one -off or a consistent feature? Because how come it's not getting the it's kind not, of reportage? That, that's why I'm a bit worried. Now, they have a leader who says, don't do repressal. They have a leader who says, okay, I'm supposed to go to Ukwa. They were reported on Wednesday his campaign trail was supposed to go to Ukwa. And then someone called them to inform them that his excellency, the incumbent governor, is also coming to Ukwa all of a sudden. And he said to his own team, we won't go to Ukwa. Let's stay off Ukwa. I don't want to have any face-off with these people. There have been a lot of attempts, and I don't want to. We should play politics decently. You so know, he left Opa <clears throat> and went to Werinta. And when the, His Excellency was coming, making a return, they went back to Opa. But even on getting to Opa, the town hall meetings they were supposed to hold in Opa, people had, they were, the people in Opa had gathered, they were harassed, they were sent out of the place where they were supposed to have this town. And it's not a one-off thing, as I was told. Now, do you know, when I say change has to come, nobody will stop it. People from Opa. People, women, men, children came out of their homes with matlas, uh, matchets and cutlasses and hose and started cleaning up a, a, a ground and put up their canopies. So you see the people are getting involved. That's why I feel that this is the first time my state is going to have an election. We've never had an election before.